Good day, survivors. My name is Matthias. This is Immersive Gaming, and welcome to part two of the Ultimate Scum One Life Survival Challenge with the Mad Max build. Now, all we basically did is we covered the surrounding areas. Okay, I am practicing my bow skills. And guys, it is very, very important to practice your bow skill, okay? The, the more you focus on the arrow's point in regards to where the arrow is going, okay? You will see it's just, it's just top and to the left of the other arrow's point. And the more you focus on that arrow's point, the more it will, like, become built into your subconscious memory where you have to aim okay um i have done it with other games and i will get to a point where i don't really think about it when i'm aiming at a target but most of your bows you are going to need to practice your bow skill until you get the compound bow and then you can then the sight is going to help you a heck of a lot the only thing that bothers me a bit about the compound bow is that it zooms in. So it's a really good weapon from far away, but close, it's it's not that great. Because, like, if I have to shoot this guy right, you know, not this guy. And of course, if, I'm, if you miss, you pay the price. But the pickaxe is very fast. But yes, if the puppet is too close, you know, it's going to bother you a bit. So you're going to have to adjust your range at, at where you're aiming at a target. But you're going to be able to be a lot more accurate. And of course, the... Uh, the what do you call it? The weight of the bow. Um, yeah, I think it's the weight, okay? Of the bow, th that number, okay, the co the number of the bow, the higher that is, the further the arrow will travel, okay? So you will see with a 20 pound bow, um, your arrow is going to drop quite quickly. Then when you upgrade to the 35 pound bow, your arrow is going to go, you know, much further, straight. And then um, 50, and then of course we get to the compound bow, the compound bow is a 60 pound bow, so you're definitely going to see a very, very good improvement. For me personally, the 100 pound bow isn't really worth it, although you can set the compound bow to adjust to your strength, but you won't be able to set it again, okay? So the bow automatically adjusts to your strength, to your capability. Um, so in my opinion, if you can handle the compound bow, don't set it. If you've got five strength, um, then you can set it, but it's not going to go a heck of a lot higher. Okay, I think when we tested it, it maybe went to like 80. No, no, it definitely didn't go to 100. You know, maybe it went to 80 or 75 pounds or something like that. But overall, if you've got five strength, you know, then you can set it. But if you've got four strength, you know, between three to four strength, don't really bother um, setting the compound bow. The standard 60 pound is more than enough. And then if you if you struggle with aiming, use the crossbow. Okay, use the crossbow. I think that's why most people like the crossbow because it's easier to aim, and of course you can put a sight on it, which is very very nice. So yeah, I just played around a bit with third person. If you guys didn't see. A drop is about it's almost two sectors away from us or let's call it one and a half but what I want you guys to see is the amount of time I spent doing this okay like I told you guys in the previous episode I've got the um, the way to break through the hordes okay I've got that sorted out but yeah, I, I really want you guys to focus on the time that I'm spending running after this drop, okay? Now, first of all, nothing's happening. Second of all, my plan was to put a base near, near C2, okay? I wanted to put a base down in B2 so that I'm close to 
any possible drop, okay? And that's the area that I really, really like. So I had I had certain places that I wanted to build a base. But remember, I'm, I don't have a vehicle. So this is taking me some time to get here. And that's why I told you guys that the, the biggest problem with me is that I know what to do. The problem is that I don't always do it. Okay, a lot of guys teased me in the past with like mistreated where I tell them never run on a road, but I always run on the road. You know, and that, that has been a problem for me. And that's definitely, definitely something that I want to focus on is, you know, applying the advice that I give you guys. And I already said that in the previous episode, I said if you're more than a sector away from a, from a cargo drop, don't go for it. It's not worth it. And there's many things, reasons why it won't be worth it. First of all, you, it's going to take you long to get there. So anyone can loot it. You know, except if you're, even if you're on a single player campaign. Okay. Now, if you're a multiplayer campaign, of course, you know, other people can loot it. So you could be doing all of this for nothing. The second thing is that most likely, remember, my carriers, you, uh, there's not a lot of people with five constitution and five dexterity on YouTube. Okay. Or not a lot of people bought the character with five constitution and five dexterity. So I'm doing this as fast as you possibly possibly can. I can maybe be a little bit lighter, but I don't think everyone, anyone's going to be very light when they go for a cargo drop, okay? So please take my advice and I am going to work on, again, applying, you know, focusing on my own advice. Because one thing that I found here is when you play scum the only time when i enjoy a survival game when i'm doing not when I, you know when nothing really is happening is when i'm immersing myself okay when i'm enjoying every moment um the weather you know the sounds everything but when i rush something like this you could say you know this is more exciting than just wandering through the forest but for me personally it's not because there's no thinking going on here i know the strategy of getting through the hordes so it's a, i'm doing a repeating thing all the time which starts getting boring and for any of you that have played on high loot servers extreme high loot servers okay you will agree with me that it's fun in the beginning, but within a week or two, it starts losing its magic, okay? Like, if you die a lot, you know, maybe you can still enjoy it, but um, after a while, if you keep repeating the same thing, it's, you know, it's, it, starts, it starts getting boring. Now, I'm not saying this is boring. I'm just saying, looking back at it, it, I could have done many other things. I could have been building my base. I could have stored my loot. Um, you know, I could have figured out how to get into a bunker. I could have focused on police stations to, to maybe get a pistol or a shotgun or a MP5. You know, because we know because of the series, because of what we've learned, okay, that the police station is focused on pistols, shotguns and MP5s. So there's there's many things that I could have done. I could have I could have made a chest, put all my loot in the chest, and just get more and more and more gear to get to the you know to advance the ten missions as fast as possible. But this is a clear example. Now you must know. I don't know half an hour, an hour. What? No, no, twenty minutes. I spent twenty minutes running here. Now, some of you would say that's unlucky. And I even tend to agree with you, okay? Running for 20 minutes non-stop and getting here precisely when the time is up. 
You could say it's bad luck. Many things that happen to you in your life, you might think is bad luck or unfair or whatever. But if you really go think about it, nothing really happens without you doing something. So just because of that mere fact, you are responsible for everything that happens to you. Okay, especially as a grown-up. Maybe not as a kid, but definitely as a grown-up. And in a game, it's completely up to you whether you're enjoying the game or not. Because of how you are approaching it and what decisions you are making. Like, if you just do the like, let's see what, what I've seen people do. If you build a base near a bunker and you just do the bunker every day, non-stop. You don't go to any other sectors, you don't go to any other locations, and you've got your you've got a base near a town and near a bunker, and you just loot, repeat, you know, loot, log out, loot, log out, loot, log out, loot, log out. Um, or you just PvP all day. It's, it's, it's the, it's that process of you not releasing yourself from what you're basically focusing on at the moment okay it's like doing the same work like i worked in a fa i managed the factory for most of my life the reason that that got to me is because i was doing the same exact thing like within the five first five or six years you know there's me there's a lot of different things that i could have done there's basically nothing in the factory that i didn't know how to do but I was doing, my main thing that I was doing was the same thing every day. That is not the company's fault. That is not the boss's fault. That is no one's fault. That is your fault for being there. Okay? And this is quite important for all of us. We have decisions. You live, you become an adult at 18. Okay? And I don't know, average life expectancy is 65 or 58. Let's say 58. Let's say a very low number, 58. That is 30 years. No, that's 40. That's 40 years of being a grown-up. Okay? How much of that 40 years did you spend studying something, trying your own business, trying different investments, um, exploring new cities, exploring new hobbies, learning to play guitar, piano, martial arts, you name it. You know, how, what responsibility have you taken to enjoy your life? And it's, the, it's and that's enough of that. That's the exact same with a game. How many things are you doing to enjoy the game? Instead of ju just doing the same thing. You know, repeating the same steps like... I've died to puppets quite a few times, and I've run after drops quite a few times. I've just got to one drop, and you know we did, we know we didn't get a lot from it. But I keep on doing it. I'm not getting the result that I'm after, but I keep doing the same action, which in turn means that I'm responsible for it. It's not bad luck. Um, it's not bad luck that the drop landed too far away from me. It's not bad luck that I got hurt. You guys will see that I've got 45 health because the, uh, the pu because my pickaxe broke. My pickaxe only had like 12% durability. And if you remember, when I was running to the drop, I dropped the axe preemptively to give me some space. You know, like if there's a weapon um, in the cargo drop, which is quite funny because a really cool... Um, a really cool thing about the cargo drop is that it can give you a construction kit, like a sledgehammer and an axe and everything. And I literally dropped uh, almost fully, you know, fully repaired um, axe when I knew my pickaxe, you know, was going down the tube. So the pickaxe broke, and I had to resort to using this um, kitchen knife, which in turn meant that you know I got the shit beat out of me but again you can go like mm, nothing is you know, nothing is going my way just like in life 
But if you really, if you really just pull back, you know that it's because of your decisions. So yeah, I just want you guys to, I just want to motivate you guys to open your mind, to step back a lot. Like right here, I was, I'm now stuck in the north. You know, there's not a lot going on around me. Um, I can't really take the hordes on anymore because I've got, you know, I've only got the kitchen knife. And um, I'm struggling to find a bush. I don't find those little trees that I can chop up. And I, I probably searched for about a half an hour for a bush. Because, and I've, of course, I'm, I've got no pants on. So I'm, I, I want to get a bow again and I want to craft the club, you know, with the nails on it. So here I started to, you know, like when I was here with the kitchen knife, I was a bit frustrated. And then I just, you know, just took my time. Again, this is another thing. Everything, everything escalates. Everything snowballs. Your bad decisions snowball on you and your good decisions snowball on you. So she's actually sliding down this hill. You can see when she hits, she actually slides towards me. Okay, I was lucky that she didn't get really good shots off there, but that could have been a, that could have been a different puppet sliding down the hill like that, and that could have been the end of me. But I just like us to focus on clearing our mind, understanding that the only person responsible for our joy or our pain or whatever is us. No one can tell you to uh, tell you to do something outside of your job. No one can tell you to feel something. You know, it's you that's reminding yourself of certain situations. So, the one thing that stood out to me on this play session is the steps that I'm repeating. And another disappointing thing is I didn't give this wolf time to bite me. <laughs> But what was exciting to me here is that I shit myself. I've, I, what, I've got 60 health left, okay? And this wolf is supposed to do like, I don't know, 60 damage or, I don't know, you know, whatever, times 5. 30 damage or whatever because of the damage multiplier. So I was actually, I panicked when I saw the wolf and it was a fantastic feeling for me. And... The reason I'm showing you guys this is, look at the stats of the food, guys. If you look at a, at wolf meat, it only gives you 19 grams of protein. But but bird meat gives you like 60, 69 grams of protein. Okay? Now right there. Again, I shit myself, but look at this. Six, six damage, guys. Six damage. So the first time I saw the first wolf, I shit myself because I felt I was in danger, major danger. And then with that wolf, you know, he literally gave me a, a jump scare because I was looking at the map, you know, as he jumped for my face. Which is great. That, that's a great feeling in a game. Until you find out he doesn't do any damage. And then I remember on the server settings, you can uh, it says zombie. You can only set the... The sentry damage and the puppet damage, okay? So me telling you guys that the animals is actually the most, actually the, um, actually the, the, the most dangerous things on the map is not true. Because you can't set the animal damage and I'm going to try and do research to see if there's a command. Um, for the animal damage um, because it's very very important to me it's very very important to me everything in the game must pose a threat to get your adrenaline going to make you know to 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 get so that you have those scares so that you're more careful of it when you hear a wolf you shit yourself when you hear a bear like in the big city with the previous character i shat myself when i heard when i heard the bear because i thought it was going to kill me now all of that fear is gone and the excitement's gone because now I know that the animal damage is default. And this was quite a good moment. And 
like, guys, preemptively, I had a bad feeling here. I've got 28 health. You know, nothing is really going right. But thank you to whoever told me that with a toolbox and a workbench, you can rep you can sharpen sh you can sharpen knives. Okay. Now I think I've tested this like on on an axe or something like that, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But someone in the comments told me you just need the toolbox for blunt objects, but you need to be at the workbench for sharp objects. Okay. And some of you don't know that. Some of you still comment that I need a. A grinding stone. I know I need a grinding stone to sharpen knives, okay? But luckily somebody in the comments told me that if you had a workbench, you know, with a toolbox, you can sharpen, um, you know, you can sharpen knives. Now, it's not overpowered because as you can clearly see, you know, it's every point that comes off the toolbox goes into the knife or the, um, or the crowbar, you know? So it's going to take quite a, quite a few toolboxes but you can get there. And yes, guys, this is the last three minutes of the episode. Um, I must say this day, this session, for me, was quite lackluster. But in retrospect, I, I'm glad that this session <laughs> was so frustrating. Okay, it was... It was like it just everything that could go, go wrong went wrong. You know, I didn't find any good loot. I missed the drop. Um, you know, everything just went wrong. But I'm glad that it happened because it 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 formatted my hard drive. Okay, I literally had a wipe of my mental hard drive, and I'm very very excited about the next session. Very very excited about the next se session because I want to get back to the basics which is patience, immersion, you know, thinking on my feet, and very importantly, patience. Not to let outside circumstances control me like a cargo drop, um, you know, or another person, or the fact that I need to go to the city, and blah, blah, blah. No, I don't need to do anything. I need to relax. Take my time and survive and play the game the way the game is supposed to be played. And that is, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Doesn't matter if you get killed by a player. You can't change what any, anyone else does, but you can always change what you do. So you make sure that you enjoy yourself. You make sure that you cherish every moment that you're playing the game and make the most out of it. And don't let the cargo drop and situations change your plans. Let it come to you. You know, let, let, let everything come to you. Just experience everything instead of trying to gobble up everything. And I will, I will show you, I will show you guys that in the next session. Okay. You guys have seen the survivor build. The Reaver build, the Rambo build, and now you guys have seen the Mad Max build. And you can go back on that. I don't know what kind of Superman stand-up that was, from stand-up to hitting me. I don't know what kind of speed that was. But you guys can go back in the video. I had 38% health. He dropped 38% with one shot. But in any case, so you guys have seen four characters. The fifth character is the last character, and that will be the best character. Whether I complete the challenge or not, it's the last character. Have a fantastic day, guys. Cheers.